criminal investigation. That's what the Attorney General of the United States says could happen if the affidavit behind the search of former President Trump's Mar-a-Lago home is unsealed. It's been just over an hour since a Florida judge started a hearing to decide what will happen with that affidavit, that document, the search, major points of contention between Trump, his supporters, and the Biden administration, and now between this country's two major political parties. So, Let's turn then to Fox 40's political analyst for some insight, Republican Tim Rosales and Democrat Ed Emerson with me now live. Gentlemen, good morning to you. Good morning. Tim, in the uproar that the search of Mar-a-Lago's caused since it happened last week, is it warranted or just a lot of posturing? All sides here know that a judge had to approve any action of the FBI agents ahead of time. No one rolled out of the office and randomly said, let's go search 45's home today. This had to go through many levels of approval before search warrants were executed. And the allegation here is that classified nuclear documents were involved. Yeah, I actually had a conversation with a former uh, FBI special agent who was in the counterintelligence uh, uh, unit. And uh, I, I think you're absolutely right, Sun uh, based on everything that we know. Um, the big question is, is whether or not the public uh, deserves or should know uh, what was in that affidavit. Uh, I think there can be an argument made that, you know, yes, in terms of for transparency, uh, we should know what it is that the uh, FBI was looking for, particularly uh, when it was uh, going uh, through and, and after a, uh, you know, such a high profile figure. Uh, there's another argument that says, well, you know, to a degree, the public ought to know, but if we're dealing with classified documents, you know, certainly there is a level of security that we want to maintain. So, uh, you know, my sense of this is, is that we, we, we really need to let the legal process play out. I think uh, it seems like President Trump and his team is trying to, you know, get some of this out in, out in the open and be more transparent about it. Uh, and it seems that the, you know, the, the FBI, uh, you know, maybe may have some concerns. So uh, let's let this play out, see what, uh, see what the judges want to do, and then uh -huh. move from there. Ed, your take on this. I, I mean, I completely agree with Tim. I mean, it, it is a process. At some point, Donald Trump with a coat over his head in handcuffs being tucked into the back of a police car is going to happen. I mean, you have to believe that if you're a Democrat. They don't issue these warrants, especially a search warrant at a high profile house like this. There's stuff there. They're not going to want to see what was in this uh, 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 affidavit. And they're not going to like what the when the indictment comes down. Uh -huh. This guy is in trouble. He's a buffoon. He is taken top secret, even above top secret. I mean, I had a crypto clearance at one point, but I there was eyes only stuff that you couldn't touch, and that is important stuff. What he was going to do with his stuff? Blackmail people. Uh, he is absolutely uh, someone who needs to be cast on the ash heap of history and taken out and tarred and feathered. I mean, he is just an embarrassment. We're gonna find slowly but surely that the Republican party, Republicans, good, decent uh, uh, Republicans are gonna walk away from this train wreck. All right, and of course, uh, those assessments of our former president, Ed's opinion as an analyst. Ed, what about the claim from Merrick Garland that unsealing this affidavit would give Trump's camp the roadmap to their case? And how has this been conjured up as an unfair attack on Republican ideals that would never happen to a Democrat? Well, I don't know. I, I would love to hear Garland say that, but once you release uh, uh, the information, there's a roadmap there. They know the roadmap. They don't need any more information. He took top secret classified documents to Mar-a-Lago like an idiot uh, because he was going to use them to blackmail people and, uh, you know, probably hiding something, the Russia uh, influence uh, on the 2016 election. I don't, I don't think there's anything there. There, there's, I, I don't think there's anything there in terms of his defense. All I right. think this is going to be the end all and the be all uh, for Donald Trump, and it's going to be bye bye. Tim, what, what about uh, Ed's assertion that all of this was for blackmail? Well, I don't want to speculate on, on on what is there or what even exists. I think you know what what we know in terms of the facts of this of this case is that the uh, Trump uh, pre former President Trump and his attorneys were in negotiations and talks with the FBI and the Justice Department. Uh, for whatever reason, those talks broke down, and then this uh, warrant was served. 
Uh, but these things, as, as we talked about at the outset and, and Ed noted, these don't happen overnight. This has to be built after you know weeks and weeks and months and months. So you know the question is is why engage in uh, talks and maybe negotiations and 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 conversations uh, between the two sides if what you're doing is building up a you know trying to build up a, a case to go in and, and and serve a search warrant. I think there are some questions that that really need that do need to be answered. Whether or not we need to know exactly what. Uh, it is that they were looking for uh, because of national security concerns. I think that's a different question. Okay. Uh, but I do think we do need to know, you know, kind of what the justification was. I think that that certainly is uh, uh, within all of our rights. Turning a little bit here, Liz Cheney lost her primary this week because of uh, a Trump-backed challenger there in Wyoming. She has been a vocal critic of the president. Uh, he seems to be just looming so very large over every little thing that's happening in the Republican Party. Does this last? And uh, does Cheney run for president, do you think, Tim? Well, I think you know, President Trump won Wyoming overwhelmingly uh, and in, in, in both elections. Uh, so I don't think it's any surprise at the result. I think certainly the, the margin uh, surprised some people and some folks I talked to in Wyoming were surprised that it was as wide as it, as, as it was. Mm -hmm. um, but I don't think, you know, certainly in terms of the actual result wasn't, uh, wasn't a surprise. Um, you know, Wyoming is going to vote for what Wyoming is going to vote for. You know, they're a different state. It's very Republicans in Wyoming look very different than Republicans in California, Republicans in New York, Republicans in Alabama. You know, very diverse. Um, I think what uh, Liz Cheney is going to do next, I think she could potentially run for president. I think that would make things interesting. Um, I do hope that that, you know, looking at 2024, I do think and I've said this before, both parties need to get beyond kind of, you know, uh, these, uh, you know, 80 something year old white guys, right? <laughs> I mean, I think, you know, that is, that really is, those are the two leaders at the, at the head of each party right now. And I think that for the future, uh, for each party to progress, is that, you know, both of them need to get beyond kind of currently what they have, and there needs to be this infusion of new leadership, Liz Cheney, or, you know, whoever else, it's their prerogative to run. All righty, Ed, and we're just almost out of time. Quickly, does Liz Cheney run, in your opinion? And if she does, does she run as a Republican or maybe as an independent? I hope she runs. I do. I think Tim is right. This is about a conversation. I've worked on 15 presidential campaigns. The question is dialogue. Bring something to the table. Bring something new. And Donald Trump has nothing new but innuendo and lies and that sort of thing. The Republican Party needs to move on from him. And I believe at some point he's going to start his own party, a third party of misfits and, and angry people who can stay out on the fringes of, of American politics. Democrats versus Republicans. We've had great candidates. I'm looking at Ronald Reagan. He was a great president and a great candidate. Uh. He was really good at running campaigns. I think she should run. I think everybody should run. Um, and I think that uh, we need to put an end to this national nightmare of Trump. We are going to have to put a pin in it right there. Of course, if there's a third party, the major party that develops, we'll of course have you back to talk more about that and its development. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for your insight this morning. Thank, Thank you, Cecilia.